Okay, so now that we've got our hole dug, whew, we've had a bit of a break. We're gonna put our first fence post in. Uh, we've got our area chalked off already. We've got a line drawn to keep our, our fence line straight. It's pretty standard practice. We're gonna go four feet and change in the hole. We have a building code here of a six foot fence with another foot for an extension. Because we're doing a horizontal fence, we're kind of bending the rules a bit and we're gonna go with a seven foot horizontal fence. Um, so the seven plus four is 11. We have a 12 foot post. Yeah. We'll just lop the top when we're done. In the event that we've dug a little too deep, that's fine, we're not gonna have any issue. So really all we have here, in a lot of cases, uh, there'll be recommendations to put gravel in the bottom. Um, again, that's fine in soil that drains, but this soil holds water. So by putting gravel in the bottom, all we're doing is raising the height that we're setting our fence post. We're not getting it as low as we want underneath the frost line. All gravel is gonna do here is just hold the water that drains into it and it'll just become a swimming pool. So it doesn't really serve a purpose. There's no drainage unless that gravel continues all the way to somewhere where it takes the water away. All it would do is become a pool. So gravel's useless here. So I'm gonna get you, Nate, pick up the post. Mr. Tough Guy, just pop, jump over the hole. Or you can just lean in. Okay, once you get on the other side of there, what we're gonna wanna do is, when I'm using a level, I like to use my level as long as humanly possible. So I've got a six or seven foot fence coming out of this hole. I wanna use my five or six foot level. We're gonna stick this bottom of this base up against the string and find out if when we're just touching the string, if we're level or we need to readjust. We're not level. So what I gotta do is I gotta get the bottom of that post I need to lift it and push it a little bit away from the string. How's that? Lift it and set it the other way. And this is just a trial and error thing. There's no rocket science, just patience. Yeah. I'm touching? Yeah. I'm not quite there. Give me a little bit more. Push. Okay, let's try that. When you're drilling a hole with an auger, it's really hard to tell if you're exactly level. We're good. Am I touching? Yeah. Tell me when I'm off. No. Oh, that is really close. So I set the base in the hole, and I'm basically moving this post until it's level. And if I touch the line before I make it level, I know I'm on an angle, so I have to adjust my base position until I can move my post and be level just as I touch the string. And if I set that as my level at the ground level, all the way across, then when I'm installing on my fence posts, I can have a string at the top and the bottom between my two points, and then the rest of these posts are going real easy. So we work really hard at setting this end, and we work real hard at setting the other fence 40 feet away. We string a line at the top and the bottom of our fence height, and then the rest of the posts, all we have to do is position them so they're just touching the string top and bottom when we put the cement in. And that way we only have to level two instead of all 10 posts. So here is level, right there. You just need to... But I'm moving the string significantly. Should be the other way, hopefully. Good, we've gone too far, good. It's like sludge. There's a pool of water down there. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we go. No, a little bit more towards me. Jeez. No, you're just twisting it. You have to actually lift and reset. There we go. Let's try that. Square that one off. There. That's perfect. Now don't move. Now that we've dug a hole, we've got we've got water. Yep. Right? One of the best advantages of living in a region like this is you can do shallow wells for your water supply for your house because clay holds so much water. <laughs> you dig a hole out anywhere at all, you got water. <laughs> all right. So we're going to be using a, a rapid post concrete. It's a quick setting cement. There's a few different names on the market, different manufacturers, it's all the same stuff. Uh, the idea is you put that stuff right in the hole and you add water, it saturates the cement and starts to set and harden within minutes. And then within a couple hours, you can start building on your post. Um, the trick, the secret to this really is that you don't have to make your cement in a wheelbarrow. You can, you can make regular cement first and if you set your post properly, uh, let it dry overnight, you'll be just fine. Um, I like this product just because of the convenience. Because of our clay, we're getting water pooling in the bottom of the post already. So we're fine for that. We don't have to wet the hole first. If you have a different soil condition, you might want to add some water first and then put the bag in. So real quick uh, skill testing question. On the bag, Nate, yeah. does it say uh, good for four season climate? Am I allowed to look? No, I told you to read that earlier. Uh, yeah. It does not say that. Oh. <laughs> All it does is give an instruction that two bags per hole. 
okay. and to put your hole at 48 inches, you use two bags of concrete. Yeah. So here's the only case in my entire life that when it says you read the instructions and the instructions are wrong. Because that's in most soil conditions and in most climates. Yeah. That's what they call a standard installation. Okay. Because our ground freezes, we're no longer a standard installation. All right, very important to know. So we're gonna go with ahead and do one bag. So bring that over and just, maybe you should grab a knife. Yeah. Usually you can just tear them open with your bare hands at the valve, but uh, might be asking a lot since you're such a rookie. <laughs> Here's the valve of the bag. If you just put your hands in there and just rip it back with all your strength. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that worked. That'd be rather embarrassing on camera. <laughs> all right, and what you wanna do is I'm gonna hold this to the post where it's touching the string. Okay. And I'm gonna use my level to level the other direction. All right? Yeah. So then I know where this post goes. We've got the cement in the right spot. I'm gonna hold it roughly in position, Nate. And you're gonna pour that bag of cement all around the hole. Okay. All right? Important that you pour it all around the hole. Go ahead. We are good to go. And if you need to step over here a little bit, that's fine too. All right. That's good. This stuff's toxic. Thank you. It is toxic. Now get away from the dust. Now we're working outdoors. Usually that's good ventilation, but today there is no air movement. So try not to bend over and breathe that. The faster okay. you do that, the better. Yeah. Okay, now you gotta get the hose, buddy. Yeah, I got it. Now, how much water does a bag of that cement get in the hole? Nate? I have no idea. I, we told you to read the instructions. What did it say? Uh, I just read the top part. Okay, can you take a look at the bag, please? Yeah. Typical man. You gotta read the instructions before you start. Front to bend. Understand what they're trying to communicate. Per bag, how many liters of water? 2.8 liters. 2.8 liters of water. So you have two options here, folks. You can buy a pail that has the markings on the side, measure of 2.8 liters, or you can do what we're gonna do, understanding that the city water pressure gives us about seven liters a minute. We need less than half of that, plus we got water in the hole already from the clay. So we're gonna go with, what, Nate, about 20 seconds? Sure. All right, Ready? 20 seconds, full blast, give it. Give her. There's an actual chemical reaction happening here and it's releasing oxygen. You can see it bubbling in the hole. Here, I got that. And there we go. So, to recap, we're gonna set this now right where we want it. Perfectly level, leave it alone. You don't even need to brace this. This is how brilliant the cement is. It starts setting so fast, you don't even need to brace it. If you want to brace it, you could, but you might just upset the things as they're settling. To recap, we're leaving the top couple of feet. We're gonna put clay back in that hole. We're gonna pound it down with our tamper. And that way when the ground starts to freeze, it'll actually act like a frozen lid, keeping the base from ever being pulled up out of the ground. That's simple science. This, uh, this lasts longer than just put any application you're gonna find. And uh, thanks for your help, mate. You're very welcome. Couldn't have done it without you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube.